Welcome to MRE Uncut, where we'll give you real and practical insights into the real estate scene in Melbourne. We'll discuss what's happening in the industry, all backed by MRE's history of over 30 years in the game. With that said, let's jump into this week's episode of MRE Uncut. Welcome back to another MRE podcast. My name's Stephen Fitzsimon, and I'm here with Peter Hoymans. G'day, Steve-o. Sophie Carmichael. Hello. I've missed you. What's that? I've missed you. Oh. Thanks, Pete. That's all right. Um, and Michael Farver. How are you going, Steve? Um, I'm doing quite well today. Thank you very much. Um, we wanted to have a chat today about uh, selling properties, getting properties ready for sale, and then sort of also in our marketplace, uh, what the buyers are looking for and what's scaring them away and, and what's happening in that in that space. Michael, uh you're the sales manager at MRE. Do you want to give a bit of an overview as to the type of stock you've sold in the last 12 months? Yeah, without doubt. It's um, it's it's varied more so over the past couple of years, which has been great. Historically, um, or it's it's been quite a large scale being uh, apartments in yep. terms of what we've dealt with, I suppose, specializing in inner city suburbs from, you know, your Hawthorne corridor down to your Port Melbourne and, and everywhere around yep. um, tends to be the case. So that's that's essentially what majority of the, the type of properties we deal with are. Okay. And and then in terms of you're saying that's sort of changed a little bit, what's, what's changed about that? Yeah, it's definitely swung in the sense that I think even looking back to the COVID periods and, and people not being overly happy with where they're based in certain locations and understanding the importance of the property that you're in. So we are, we have seen quantity of transactions definitely increase significantly since that COVID period um, is where it sits. And then I suppose we're currently within a, a, a position where we're not seeing as many newer builds actually filter into the market, which is something that I've historically seen over the past eight years more specifically. So development's actually slowed down. So we're seeing a lot more from a resale standpoint as opposed to um, off the plan type builds so or properties. So there's still activity. Definitely. Very, very strong activity. Right. So the activity locally is increased. Obviously, the international activities died off. That's yep. put a real dent in the developers being able to get stuff off the ground. Without doubt. Um, and then if we forward forecast, we're going to have population growth and the same amount of supply. So prices are going to rise. Couldn't agree more. So if we look at that and we say, all right, um, I'm not ready now, but I'm thinking of selling in 12, 18 months, whatever it might be, and I own one of these apartments that you're working on, what have I got to start thinking about? Yeah, I think what's worth thinking about or, or first initially looking at that specific development, so to speak, or even if it was a landed property, um, is, is seeing the surroundings and what might take place over the next 12 months. Is there a new construction that might take place? Um, an example would be, for example, uh, Garden Street. We've currently got one on the market in South Yarra, the Jam Factory and the redevelopment finally looking like it's going to take place. Just any certain things that might be developed within that exact area that might have an impact on that property in either a negative or a positive way, I think it's important to note too. Um, then looking at it further more specifically to the property itself and any sort of renovation works that, that's needed to take place to ensure that it presents as good as possible online um, is critical too. Um, uh, uh, necessary steps for taking um, in terms of selling. Yeah, so they talked to a lot recently about cladding. What what what's the impact of that on the market now? Uh, are, are people getting used to properties with cladding issues, or are most of them now rectified? Where are we sort of sitting there? Yeah, well, the reality is, at a given point of time, there was sixteen hundred developments that had some form of cladding within Melbourne and scattered around. So substantial. So just to clarify, talk about flammable cladding. Flammable cladding. Yeah. Well. Essentially identified to having well, a form of cladding, well, cladding that and didn't comply with any rules, and, yeah. and then it's a, a matter of investigating to see where it sits. the yeah. The painful part of the process is some of these developments have been identified as having or being impacted by a form of cladding, but they didn't know if it was flammable or not for a four to five year period because yeah. there was so many um, that they did have to review. In terms of communication pieces that we did have with the relevant parties with where they sat, it seems like the government really focused on commercial properties, hospitals, schools, um, commercial sites prior to really diving straight into the residential sector in terms of property and where they sit. Um, clearly, they funded portions of a lot of developments, not others, but it has been a really well drawn out 
um, process in terms of these these builds. And um, it hasn't, to get back to your question, prospective buyers have very much become immune or um, it, it's not uncomfortable territory anymore in having these discussions. They're almost actually Kills a few deals, though. Um, yeah, without Some. doubt. But then it's <laughs> one of those things you go to an older type of property and you've got issues such as rising dam potentially mm -hmm. or foundational issues. You go to a new build and you've potentially got something impacted with cladding. So yeah. has it been a, a headache over the past four or five years more specifically? Without doubt. Yeah. But it, it isn't that uncomfortable topic as what it was previously just due to how frequent that it does come up. Yeah, that's interesting. I, th I would have thought that it was still a problem, but it's good that it's sort of fixing itself. Mm. The, the component that I asked in is is if the the you're you're in one of those buildings. Let's yep. let's say you've got an apartment in one of those buildings. You, you find out that okay, the cladding's been fixed, so that's good. Um, there doesn't look like there's any development across the road. Do I put it on the market and sell it? Like, a, is this a uh, do I keep the tenant? Do I get rid of the tenant? Do I stage it uh, with fake furniture? What am I? What's what's fake my fake furniture? What's fake furniture? <laughs> well, furniture that's only used for display purposes. Well, it's not, not good fake. quality. It just looks nice. It's, it's I don't know if you're referring to digital furniture or not. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Fake. I'm, I'm talking. Look, it's not fake furniture. Do you remember going into the? <laughs> I know you see what the you're talking about, about, but it's not fake. Fur it's real furniture. No, the telly's been, a fake, dude. But it's been staged. <laughs> okay. But you know what? What, what if, if you if you've got an apartment in one of those buildings? Yep. How do you prep it for sale now in in today's mode? What are the renters or that are moving that from renting into uh, home ownership? What are the first time buyers that are moving out of mum and dad's place? What are they looking for in, in the property that they're going to see? In each given point of time, in terms of selling, the best case scenario would be having the property vacant and having it styled. Hundred percent. For the reason of I suppose two key things. Vacant and style are vacant on the basis of complete flexibility in terms of access. A lot of the members of, I suppose, our team are happy to get in there on a Sunday and conduct an inspection. Or but but, but if I was yep. a tenant, yep, and you listed the property, there's no way I'd let you in. I I just say no. Oh, look, there's legislations you know, that yeah. I, I get where you're coming I'm from. That can I, it, it like, can be more difficult. Off. I I know you're trying to sell the house, but it's like it's an invite like. If I was the you tenant, get compensated though, Peter. I don't yeah. care. So I don't you, want you. Well, what are they going to pay? Thirty-five it's, dollars or half a day, or half, half a day's rent, rent, whichever yeah. is greater. But your comments are correct, and I suppose yeah. both of you, being on each side of it, yeah, yeah. highlights the different types of tenants that we deal with in campaigns. If we do conduct a campaign, whilst so the owner's tenanted. really just got to suck up the cost of not yep. having a tenant, and it's let's say it's vac what's our average sales uh, on market at the moment, so. If in terms of vacant to tenanted? Oh, just sales. How long does it take to sell a property? They've been going quick at the moment. They We're have really been going looking quick. around. Yeah, right. They've, so you're going to lose a month's rent. About, two, maybe a month's weeks. rent plus yeah. spot plus on about, settlement. About 33 days. So let's say 60 days. So they're going to lose in, uh, three months. And that's, let's say, two and a half grand. Let's say it's 3,000 a yep. month rent. That's 9,000. But the difference between having it vacant and styled versus having a tenant in there, because not all tenants keep it like the yep. owner would. Would easy be nine grand, I reckon. I've got mm. a really good example for you. Yeah. 38 Great. Robert Road. So Hit Albert Tower. Well. well, we the two bedroom, two bathroom, one car space property. Where is it, sorry? Albert Tower, South oh, Melbourne. Yeah. Okay, good spot. Good, yeah, location, good building. Domain. Spot on. Great Beautiful developer, spot. Dave Scalzo, Perry Project. Very, very yeah. nice build, good good quality Dave. finish. Now, Carter the two group. bedroom, two bathroom, one car space property facing the front of the development. So you've got an, an uninterrupted 06. outlook. Exactly. Well, I think it is an 06 actually on the corner. Yeah. Wow. Towards the left, you've got the botanical. Towards the right, you've got the, um, the lake, which is great. Within the same period of 60 days, we conducted two campaigns. The apartment was identical. Mm. One was styled, one wasn't. Yep. The difference was? 50 grand. Close, Pat higher. 58. Higher. 72. Lower. 65. <laughs> $65,000 on the dot. Uh, so, so much better The at this. only difference was the property being styled. I believe the difference in height within the development was about so three three stories. That's so a good example, though. That's about so 700. So 10, grand, yeah. 10 grand's made you 50. Spot on. Something and like and in terms of that, days on market minimized significantly as well. You know, so it was a really good example. We were talking before we started this podcast about properties up for sale, specifically in you know Hawthorne, Richmond, which I've just been going through as a little bit of a passenger, just just checking it out. One of the things I've noticed at the moment is the styling on some of the prop. Let's say the properties are one point five plus. Yep, it's so good. Mm -hmm. I don't trust it because so, it looks so too good. It's a whole other podcast, probably. But I I actually start to go. 
what's behind that painting that's six uh, meter? Yeah, yeah what's or if there's a big rug. Why is there a six yeah. meter rug on yes, the floor? Yes. Yeah. And why is everything put, like, and it's so, but, uh, and, but it takes my eye away from any defects. Yeah. There's no Lego on the floor. But a couple of houses <laughs> I've gone through after the styling's been removed, and I'm like, this is not, not the, the same, same house. Thing. Yeah, it looks so like it's a really different property. So yeah. In a way, I kind of like the idea of seeing both. If I was if I was mm. buying now, I think I'd be a little bit, you know what I mean, a little bit skeptical of the fully zoomed up furniture. To well, say, let's just, face it. just saying, it's 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 valid comments too because that, funny enough, we actually probably don't hear that sort of feedback too often surrounding Not it, really but it's, it's, de- it's definitely valid. And then I'm skeptical and I don't too. trust real estate agents. So <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Like, what but can I say? But yeah, we're in a room of real estate agents. Exactly. And, and, and we're all agreeing. <laughs> like if you're styling something, it's sort of like, oh, we'll put a pot plant over there to hide that yeah. water stain. Did you say pot plant? But, yeah, pot plant. I know a guy who works for a company called Pot Plant. <laughs> what do they do? Uh, video and pe- podcasting. Oh, yeah. Really okay. good. Are they? Yep. Oh, we should use them. We will. Um and and but you know the, like the the logic for us is uh, let's ex- let's hide away that let's conceal yep. it yeah. let's uh, do this so we're doing a double thing it's one it's hide and then the other is it's showing like you know you you the consumer is is trying to experience well, it as they to, could live you, it you but they're probably do, not going to have you're that trying to do job. modeling there or is, what is that I'm not trying to model oh, okay sorry simply <laughs> a facial gesture <laughs> Well, you can judge that. But the advice is, so, but the advice is, despite all that, the, the advice is style. Without well, the style gets not better. only does it make it clearly appear more beautiful in terms of the way that it's presented, but it's probably just as important to create a sense of scale to prospective buyers. Okay, so devil's advocate. Yep, I'm the vendor. Uh, you want me to spend how much is it to furnish my two bedroom apartment? Uh, anywhere between four and a half thousand to six thousand. Okay, so you want me to spend six grand furnishing my thing to make your job easier to sell it? Plus the plus the lost rent. Plus the lost rent. Three, three months, nine grand. Three months, nine grand. So fifteen grand so, to make to make my job you you, you make your job easier. Not a serious look. I get where you're coming from. However, if you want to obtain the best possible price in the current environment and have your property stand out in doing so. We're confident that this process will allow yourself to achieve the premium to what the market would be willing to pay. Now, historically, that means that I've got to find um, the rent that, yep. that I'm going to I'm going to have to pay for the mortgage because it's three months where I'm going to have to find the mortgage, and then I'm also going to have to find money for marketing, and I'm going to have to find money for staging. Is that still the same now? It's changed on the basis of different avenues that are in place, such as um, campaign agent, which predominantly or most agencies use around Australia, which is basically almost like a- They fund it. Spot on. They fund it and they they can even, well, essentially it is like an afterpay and Mm -hmm. they've even opened up to do um, renovations, for example, via that. Do they charge a fee on the- the, the... Very small fee, but they do a lot of quantity. So so if if there is a a period in which it does- What if you don't pay? Is that where they really make their money? Look, if it does, if if you don't pay, uh, fortunately, I'm not the one that has to chase it up. Yeah, right. But um, I'm I'm sure that they've got those <laughs> those game changers in place for it. exactly right. With it, it has yeah. for us, it's been it's been a significant different uh, a significant benefit because, as Steve stated, you do have no rent coming in. You've still got if it is an apartment, all your outgoings attached from a owner's Bonus corporation call, standpoint. Yeah. You're paying six thousand dollars to have the property styled. Yeah. So it, it it so quickly adds up. So we got style properties look good. So, Soph, why are we getting, like I look on our team's channel and I'm going to say 90% of the sales are owner-occupiers. 90% of our sales are owner-occupiers? Yeah. Tell me why. I want to know why. Like back in the day, back in the day. Yeah. I don't know. Were you very old? Five years ago. I'm just talking five years ago, mate. Give me a break. We just sold half to investors, half yeah, to There's yeah, always yeah. this kind of reasonable yeah. balance. Mm. Now it's uh, um, owner-occupier heavy. I would say- Despite the fact that I had a chat, just side note, with a bank manager the other day, and he was telling me now they're assessing loan applications at 9.3%. So if you're borrowing 600000 they assess you at 9.3%. So nine, on an interest-only loan, um, that's on 600 grand, that's 54000 That's You've got to have the mm. capacity to pay 54. Here's the Here's a really interesting one. If you've got a credit card with a 20 grand limit, they take the- Credit card interest rate, which is 22%, they double it because that's the rate you pay if you're in default. So that goes to 45. But then for your loan assessment, they double it again. 
So when they assess your loan, a credit card is 90% interest. That's crazy. That's what it is. It is. So if, you've, if you're trying to get a loan for a house, cut your cards up. Mm. Sorry, I just wanted to throw mm. that in. Mm. Don't ask me why that came over me, but I was still stuck in my head. <laughs> no, yeah. that's fair enough. It, that, that had me rattled having that yeah. conversation as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So 600 grand, 9%, is so 54. And then if you've got two credit cards of 20 grand mm. each, um, roughly 90% times 20 is 18,000 times two is another $36,000 you have to show in income to get that loan. Wow. Nuts stuff. Okay. Hot, it's a hot yeah. tip for people that want to buy a house. So going back, owner occupiers are buying. Or why are investors yes. not buying? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think I've actually had this conversation a lot recently with a lot of our buyers. Um, they don't want to pay off someone else's mortgage anymore. The rental market is so high. So they're sort of in the mindset of why would I pay off your mortgage when I could be getting my foot in the door? Even had a conversation with Jared, one of our colleagues, um, earlier today, he was like, even if I'm not going to make money on this apartment, I'd rather just be paying off my own mortgage and be in my own place um, just because the rental market is ever increasing. It's always going up. Yeah, well, the money's got to, it's coming out of your account. Might as well go Rental money's exactly. going to keep going. Yeah. We know well, that. Well, that's the thing, repayments in many cases you know for a you, lot of You these know when boys. you borrow the money, though, from a bank, if it's a principal and interest only loan, principal you might and learn interest something only. Here, Pat. Principal and interest only. A principal interest loan, right? A normal variable mm. loan, which is what you get when you buy your first home, for example. Mm. The first 11 years, you only pay interest. I'll say it again. The first yeah. 11 years, you only pay interest. So in the first 11 years, the principal does not reduce. Well, it does. No. Okay. First well, 11 well, years. Well, agree to disagree. Well, um, the, the first 11 years, okay. All right, I'll rephrase it. The first 11 years, the Bulk, 90% yes, of your payments is interest only. So you don't start reduce. So if you're, if you're going to stay there for less than 10 years, get an interest only loan, miles better off. Mm. Yeah. So another hot tip for you. You can have it for free. I won't charge I was going to say, very much appreciated. No charge. We need a new episode, uh, Hot Tips with Pete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we could do that. Yeah. Studio, listen up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's going on. Oh, that's true. So we've got... Hot tips from Pete flying at us, but yep. we're sorry. It, it, no, I just want to keep on the, <laughs> on the focus of the uh, of the um, of the topic here. But so we've got the owners going out there. We we're talking a little bit earlier about the style of sale and how that's impact, impacting the market at the moment. So if you were saying that properties are selling faster than we've ever seen them sell in this market, there's obviously strong demand for this, especially sub six hundred. Is that yep. the peak of it, Spot or yeah, is definitely. it still strong above that? It's 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 still strong, but in terms of that first home buyer market specifically, yep. for example, six hundred thousand yeah. dollars. Everyone's trying to save money on stamps. Yep. Definitely. So the the that whole market is alive. They're um, they're going for the the purchase, but the the style of sale, private sale, um, expressions of interest, uh, auction. Uh, talk me through uh, what vendors should be expecting because they probably bought their house at an auction, you know, uh, 25 years yeah. ago. Now they're selling their investment property that they might have bought off the plan or privately at some point. Well, what should they be expecting now, Michael? In terms of campaign style, it's it's dependent on the price point and the type of property that it is. So if you've got something above $600,000, it might be unique uh, in terms of the type of property that it is or the supply and demand levels um, will – create it to be obvious to believe that there's going to be a high level of demand. Yep. The auction campaign might be that useful method. Okay. For so it's something unique, something special. It it, it has to auction be auction can it still has to work be. and in, be in, effective. Yep. Yeah, in an apartment market, for example, where you've got duplication of that property type across all of these suburbs at very, very high quantity, then that private sale method is going to be more suitable. It will meet the needs of, I suppose, the the first home buyers that are going to be in the market from a comfortability standpoint as well, where you know that if it was an auction campaign, you're, you're actually cutting out a large portion of your, your buyers simply due to lack of confidence in attending a campaign method such as an auction as well. Yeah, I don't trust auctions one bit. Look, a lot don't. I don't we hear it often. I don't trust auctions more. So the <laughs> yeah. two together. Has anyone heard the rumor about stamp duty? Being removed and a bigger land tax. Yes. Yeah. Like, I mean, like, like uh, for first Company home buyers, taxes. no stamp duty. Oh, 
Yeah. First time buyers. No, I haven't yeah, heard that. First time buyers. No stamp duty. Regardless of um, price point. Uh, but, but they get to pay it off over 10 years. Right, so they have an increased tax for 10 years. Yes. Oh. As opposed to stamp duty. It's just a rumour. I'm not like, so there's, there's, like, there's yeah. nothing that can be. It doesn't come true, but it's sort of, that's that's what I've heard is, is, is going to no, be in the next budget. There's nothing that can be introduced that would surprise me now in terms yeah. of all these chopping and changings of different legislations and yeah, whatnot. Yeah. Nothing surprises me now. So we're out of time. So hopefully there's something in that for everybody. Thanks for joining us, uh, Michael, Sophie, and Peter. Cheers, mate. Thank Thanks, you. guys. Cheers.